Hello Supers there, so today we're going to learn how to do multiple movements in one file and still have all the linked parts work exactly how they should. So first of all, before you do this, the first thing you should do is finalize your layout for pretty much everything. You should have all the music written because this is going to be one of the last things you should do. If it's one of the first things you do, it's going to be a real pain to fix later on. So in the spirit of that, I'm going to start off by adding a couple tempo markings in here just to denote the different movements. Uh, yeah, sure. That's it. Not a great tempo marking. But, uh, yeah, moderato. Okay, so we have four different movements here. And one of the things you also want to do is you want to get out the number of systems correctly. So we want to get this started on the first system. So I'm just going to go like that, get it started on the first system. Everything's laid out nice. Let's go like that. And if you're curious, this is that shortcut was a keyboard maestro macro I have. You can find a link to it in the description. And all it does is come up here to utilities, bit measures. Alternatively, you can hit control shift M. Lock selected measures in one system and hit OK. That's all that was doing. Just that way I can get it on a new line. So let's quickly do that for the others. Again, if, the, if you were actually finalizing a piece right now, you'd probably want to take more care than I'm doing to make sure that this all looks nice. I am basically just rushing through it and doing this speedily. That way I can show you the process more than actually doing it myself. Okay, there, good enough. And how does the end look? The end, we have that, yeah, we're gonna fix that. And you also need to do this for all the parts as well. And I'm just gonna show it to you with this very first part that pulled up. And we're gonna do that, just that way it looks all nice and messy. And I'm only going to do this with one part, again, just to show you the process, rather than rather than like actually just watching me do this myself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's sloppy. That's messy. It's good enough for now. Yeah, let's just, let's just do that. That's probably what I should have done in the other one. And there was one more? No, there was only three of them. Okay. So now, let's say we have everything finalized, it's good, ready to go. So there's two steps we're going to do. The first is we're going to do all the little things like the indent, the part names, and the measure numbering all in one step using a JW plugin. Secondly, we're actually going to have the movement names centered over the music in each of the parts and the scores. I should also mention that if you're going to um, want to make the score full size, like that I guess it was already at the right size uh, this would also be the time to do this and same thing with over here um, if you want if you want to space anything like that now would be the time to do that so I'm gonna walk through each of these steps with each of these movements all at once that we can see it nice and quickly so first thing we're gonna do select the first measure of the first movement it has to be the first movement not any of the others come up here to our plugins JW plugins and make sure to download the Start New Piece plugin. If you don't know how to get started with JW plugins, I have a link to that in the description. And then all you have to do is hit the Start New Piece, and everything is sorted out. And now you can see there's a bunch of the conventions that's normally in the new piece. You have a, the time signatures redisplayed, you have the key signature redisplayed, and we can actually have different key signatures here, different time signatures here, and they're not shown on the previous measure just like it is. There's a bigger indent to fit the full instrument names, which is what you normally do. And all that's nice and done nicely and quickly for you. I guess I didn't quite do that correctly. So then again, select the first measure, come up here to JW Plugins, start new piece. And the other thing to note is that as you can see, this new movement, now we already start over. So like over here, this is probably a better way of putting it. So we already have measure two set up and measure one set up. No need to worry about restarting measure numbering. It's already done for you with this plugin. That's the one thing I forgot to tell you. Once you get it sorted out, hit Command, highlight everything, hit Command L. I'm going to do that in the part. That just locks everything. Nothing can move. Because right now I got messed up over here. In each of these, because I forgot to lock stuff. Because since it indents the page, the flow is going to want to reshift already, so make sure to lock everything before you do this. That's a step I forgot to do. 
And again, we are at measure 35, come here to plugins, JW plugins, start new piece. And now if we go back to it, we're at measure one. So that's the first step sorted out. The second step, it's going to require a little bit more manual labor. So I'm going to show that to you right now. First, we want expressions. I'm going to create a new expression category. And let's, yeah, that's the basis off the time of marks. And I'm going to call this movement score because this is going to be the movement that appears in the score. Fixed size, good, 14, yeah, good enough. No, 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 let's, let's make this, let's make this 24. Why not? It'll probably look bad. And create something in here. I'm just going to call this movement two. Nice generic name. Hit enter. So now we have movement two over there. So now we have this in the score. And I'm going to follow a guide made by Motet from the finale form over here. Yeah, don't worry about number one or two that's already taken care of in the plugin. So that we want to create a movement title center on page, which will remain in the right place as much as it moves around, blah, blah, blah. Let's go back over here to this edit categories. And we're going to go over here to the positioning. Okay, good. Make sure alignment point is center. Justification is center. Make sure alignment point is left bar line. So you want to go over here to horizontal alignment, left bar line. Additional horizontal offset. The distance between the margins, yada, yada, yada. And so basically, we need to find all these numbers and then plug it to this formula and we'll get a result. The first tool, the distance between margins. We're going to come over here to the page layout tool. Page layout. Page margins, edit page margins. Because we have one inch over here, 0.5 inches over there. Those are our margins, but we want the distance between the margins, not what the margins are. So I know this is an eight and a half by 11 page score, which tells me there's eight and a half between page to page. So if minus the margins, that's seven inches. So we have seven inches between the margins divided by two. Indent, to find the indent, all we have to do is still in the page layout tool, come here to page layout system, edit system margins. The indent is what's gonna be over here on the left. So that's 0.5. So again, we have seven for distance between margins, indent over here. Now system scaling, and so I'm going to first select the system, come over here to resize staff system, and result in system scaling, 71%. So that's that number. So again, we have 7 inches, half an inch, and 0.71 for the system scaling. Then you have to do is pull out your calculator, and then plug this in. And for me, that gets me about 4.57. Hit cancel because we don't actually want to lay it out. Over here, select that again. Edit categories, additional horizontal offset. That is the number you just calculated. So for me, it's 4.5774. That's probably more decimal places than we need. Hit assign, and there it is. It's in the center. Except now, if we look at the part, it's no longer in the center. So unfortunately, we have to do the same thing for the part. I'm not going to go through all the math. I'm just going to do it for you. So go over here and hit go over here. On the first staff, I'm going to at edit categories, I want to duplicate this and we're going to do movement part. And the only reason I'm doing it over here in the categories is because we have multiple movements. That way I don't have to recalculate the numbers every time. So justification center, left bar line. Uh, then we just have to recalculate this. Hit OK. Movement two. There we go. You can see they're just overlapping each other right now. Go to the part. Come over here to page layout, number four. Page margins, I believe it should be half inch, half inch. That gives us seven and a half inches for this first number. The indent, I believe, should be half an inch. Indent's half an inch, so half an inch for the second number. So some scaling, page layout over here, 91%. So again, for the part, we have seven and a half, half inch, 91%. So if you put that into your calculator, you get 3.57 and come back here. And we're going to select it, movement part, edit categories, 3.5714. That's probably more decimal places that matters. And now we can see it's moved over here. But, and now we have a version that's centering the parts. So next up, I'm going to create new expressions for each of the following movements. So over here, hit the first measure, movement in the score. I want to duplicate and we're going to make it movement three. Go like that. 
I'm going to come over here, duplicate movement three, like that. We have two different ones. Finally, we're going to come over to the last movement, duplicate edit movement four, and that was in the part, so now we're going to go to score, duplicate movement four, and so there we go. Okay, so now that we have all the expressions set up so that they will look correctly in both the score and the parts, we need to figure out how to hide them because right now we have both of them on the score and both of them in the parts. And that is not exactly the nicest look. So to do this, we're going to actually start messing around with score lists. So first we're going to hide the one that's going to go only in the part. Edit categories, score lists. We want to define a new score list. I'm going to say score list seven because it's probably not in use. And we're, we're going to title this part only and we want it to hit do on the top staff of only the parts hit okay hit okay and assign and you'll notice it's no longer in the score and if we go to the parts it's still in the top of the parts which is exactly what we want to do and as you can see it's done that on every single movement so if we go to these other movements back here it's no longer over here and it's no longer over here nice centered that's exactly what we want. And we'll make sure that this is only on the top staff so that way it actually looks like it's a movement title and not just a big text that's placed in the middle of the staff. So again, we're going to go to movement score. I just realized I misspelled these. Movement score. And we're going to do score top staff, right? I already set this up so that way it's only checked on the score of the top staff. It's not checked in any of the parts. Hit OK. Hit OK. And assign. And now we can see it's only on the score in the top staff. It's no longer in the part, which is exactly what we want to do. And as you can see, it's been applied to every single movement. So that is it. That's how you create multiple movements in Finale for one file. If you found this video at all helpful, make sure to like down below. Each week I post new content about how to use Finale to its fullest, so if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so that way you get notified as soon as any videos come out. And if you have any questions with the process, feel free to comment down below. I will respond to it as soon as I see it.